In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today's Gospel reading highlights the importance of perseverance in faith. When we hear the story about this Canaanite woman's encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ, we can't help but feel a little uncomfortable. This isn't his usual way of interacting with people, and it can strike us as excessively harsh at first. Indeed, according to the Holy Fathers, this atypical and seemingly rude initial response to her was actually intended by our Lord for a purpose, to reveal the greatness of this woman's faith and to teach his disciples and us the universality of the gospel, a mission that they would soon carry to the ends of the earth. Remember that at the time of our Lord's coming in the flesh, the Jews saw themselves as the only chosen people and despised the pagan nations around them. Though it was not without reason that God had commanded Israel in old times to separate themselves from the surrounding nations who worshipped false gods and among whom immorality was a way of life. But God's providential care and concern is not for Israel alone, but for all peoples. As he spoke through the prophet Isaiah, I will sow among the nations, and they who are far off shall remember me. I will make signs unto them and receive them, because I will ransom them. Recall St. Simeon's prophecy that we heard last week, that Christ will be a light of revelation to the nations. The disciples, however, did not yet have this understanding and shared the prejudices of their time. Jesus here seeks to reveal to his disciples and us this woman's faith, her perseverance and humility, and through her the salvation of the non-Jewish world that sat in darkness and the shadow of death. And so she with great humility, great humility accepts this hard word applied to her people and does not turn away and lose heart. But rather, faith remains strong in Jesus as the only one who can help her. This poor woman, writes St. Nikolai Velimirovich, had a deep sense of the powerlessness of the pagan world and she, <clears throat> of its debasement. She had a yearning for something greater, something brighter, more pure. And that for which she yearned was suddenly and gloriously revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. She therefore did not recoil from him, but bore and even acknowledged his word. She nonetheless begged at least a crumb of that life-giving bread that God had sent to Israel. And that bread is Christ. I remind you also of the word of one of the contemporary Athenite elders who remarked that in one pearl of Holy Communion, one particle of the body and blood of Christ, the whole of paradise is contained. And with this word of hers, our Lord praises her faith, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. For through her is revealed the faith of many Gentiles who have come to believe in Christ and be saved. She had been raised in error, had grown up worshipping idols and false gods, born into a land of darkness, and yet she came to understand that none of that could help her, could save her daughter, that only in Jesus Christ is salvation. Hers is a faith manifested through perseverance. He who endures to the end, perseveres to the end, will be saved, as our Lord said elsewhere. But the opposite of perseverance is discouragement and what it can lead to, giving up, quitting. St. John Chrysostom warns us against discouragement. He says that discouragement does not allow the one who falls to get back up. It can hurl us to the abyss of darkness. Whereas if we don't become discouraged, if we persevere, we can be delivered even from these depths. He says, and listen to this, the devil wants nothing more than for us to despair. Let us never lose hope, says St. John, because the devil has no greater weapon than discouragement. We don't give him nearly so much pleasure when we sin as when we become discouraged. You hear that? The devil takes not so much pleasure when we sin as when we become discouraged, right? Because the way back to God is repentance. And of course, the discouragement and what it can lead to, despondency, despair, um, separates us from that. At some point or another during this past year, I think it's fair to say that we've all struggled 
with discouragement. For some of us, this remains an ever-present battle, day by day. And the lines between discouragement, despondency, depression, and despair are all, not always easy to distinguish. It's often just a matter of degree, and we may find ourselves somewhere, somewhere in that pit. But despondency, as a spiritual malady, especially manifests itself when we start to forget about God or to lose hope in Him. When we feel our sins too heavy to be forgiven, when we lose the desire to struggle against sin and our bad habits, and when we start to find ourselves, and if we start to find ourselves in such a place, we have to remember, first of all, that faith isn't a feeling. It's possible to believe and not be feeling it. Faith is courage and perseverance rooted in the knowledge and experience of God's goodness and love. It is never giving up, never giving in to despair, picking ourselves up once again, making the sign of the cross, and beginning again. Such was the faith of the Canaanite woman, and such was the faith of Peter, when many were scandalized by our Lord and turned away. Remember what he said, Lord, where shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. <clears throat> May this be the experience, the heart, the breath of our whole being. Lord, where shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. This, the world can offer us many enticing distractions, and it can even offer us many scapegoats to blame for our troubles. But we must remember that our greatest trouble is nothing other than to forget about God and to doubt His goodness and His providential care for us. What are some things we can do when we start to feel most discouraged? Well, we can, one, force ourselves to stand before the Lord and to pray, to lay our heart before Him. We can hold fast to our morning and evening prayer time, to go to church when we don't feel it, especially when we don't feel like it. To open the Gospel, sometimes just when we're in that dark place, to open the Gospel and read a few verses or a chapter can change our whole frame of mind. To go outside and take a walk, praying in our heart while getting some fresh air, not to discount this either. There was this, a story, remember, of the Long Monastery, of one of the old saintly hermits. And it, he, li he lived alone, and he had this habit. Whenever despondency would come upon him, whenever he felt particularly down, he had a rowboat. And he would go out on his rowboat, and he would row around the lake praying the Jesus prayer. But every now and then, sometimes in bad weather, the other monks would see, oh, there's Father Damasy out there again, rowing around his rowboat. Well, you know, he, he did that. He didn't give up. Because what would what happen, right? We just can get sunk down in that pit, and it gets harder and harder to get out to motivate ourselves to go forward. But we can force ourselves, the other thing to do is to force ourselves to do something kind for someone else. To do something kind for someone else because nothing can help us forget about our own troubles so much as being of service to our neighbor. But no matter what, brothers and sisters, be convinced in your hearts of the love and goodness of God, of His providential care for us. Know that He is the only one in whom we can find the fullness of life and joy and spiritual health. For better, O Lord, is one day in thy courts than a thousand elsewhere. And I would rather be the doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. And better, O Lord, incomparably better, to partake of the crumbs of your table, to partake of one pearl of thy most pure body and precious blood, than to feast of the finest fare of this world. To thee, O Lord, be glory, honor, and worship, together with thy Father and thy all Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. <coughs> Let us say with all our soul and with all our mind, let us say. <coughs> Lord, have mercy. Lord, Almighty, the God of our fathers, we pray thee.